Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Wednesday, June the 6th, 2018. A quick reminder, we are here at the beginning of the season, and even though activity is traditionally slow this time of year, there might be signs, as I'm going to show you in a moment, that that might be different this year. We already had Alberto just before the start of June 1st in this era, or area, the area of the era, and maybe we're getting ready to add something else. We'll have to see. I'll get into that. All right, so first of all, in the Atlantic, nothing out there for the time being. Nothing showing up on the five-day outlook either. But if we look at the Pacific, get over here, we do have Tropical Storm Aletta right here, and that's going to be a hurricane before we know it. And then this area down here south and east of the Gulf of Tehuantepec, which is right there, and there's Guatemala. El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and there's another disturbance that's likely to develop over the next several days, and that has a very high chance of doing so. So the Eastern Pacific, quite busy through this corridor at the moment, and maybe, just maybe, some of that energy will sort of spill over to the Caribbean side, but I'm not so sure that it's necessarily, I'll have to investigate. We'll get into it. There's a lot to talk about. Here's a nice visible satellite shot there. We see Aleta in the eastern Pacific and this sort of monsoon trough feeding into it. Some very stable air way off to the northwest of Aleta. And then this other system trying to congeal down here. And the east pack going to become busy. We do have this draped frontal system across the northern Gulf of Mexico. And anytime you do that, you already have this area of convergence where the air is coming together along this front. It's kind of like a surface trough. When it washes out, the upper level energy comes in and then lifts out, and you leave this front behind. Sometimes you get small, almost micro-scale developments. You remember Emily last year? I know some of you do. Short-lived, very small, a little controversial. Some people thought it shouldn't be named, but it was a very small tropical cyclone and it only lasted for a brief time. It did bring some heavy rain to portions of Florida, and it's all about the impact, and even though it wasn't large and substantial, for those that it impacted, it was a pain in the rear end, and we have to watch to see if maybe something tries to develop out of this area. If we get a closed off piece of vorticity or spin that tries to generate, I call it grapes along the grapevine, and there are lots of ways to get tropical cyclones to develop, and these old frontal systems is certainly one of those. We also need to watch what happens in this area over the next five to seven days. Forget it out here. This is completely shut down for the time being, which it should be this time of year anyway. Now, real quick, looking at Aleta right now, the current guidance indicating a general out to sea trek several days for the next several days. It's a pretty big envelope overall. That's a pretty big spread. Uh, but, you know, nothing is wild up towards here where you have a split. It's just a fairly wide area of potential. You know, you have, what is that, the uh, HMON, which replaced the GFDL, and then you have your climate, uh, climatology and persistence model, which really isn't a model per se. Anyway, kind of a big spread there, but luckily we don't have anything even to these islands. I think, is that Socorro Island? I should know that. But... Cabo San Lucas, no problems with this, so don't worry. Maybe as it becomes a hurricane, it'll send those swells out, and the surfers can take advantage of that. If you know your local surf forecast for Cabo, check it out, and maybe the surf will be up. The intensity guidance for Aleta, uh, definitely going to be a hurricane. I say definitely. It really looks like it. You never say definitely, and you never say never. Um, pretty good model agreement that overall hurricane intensity for Aleta. And again, that might bring some wave action to the Cabo San Lucas area and other areas of mainland Mexico, not just on the Baja Peninsula. Here is the GFS from the 12Z run today, interpretation of what's happening in the East Pack. What are we looking at? Well, this is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, and we're looking at vorticity or spin. I say this often that I like this level of the atmosphere because it shows me the relative health of systems. Tropical cyclones, we're looking for this round appearance in the vorticity signature. That's what I look for. Is this what the people at the National Hurricane Center look for? Or 
other, like, I'm a geographer. I have a degree in physical geography. Now, I do have meteorological training, but I am not a degreed meteorologist. So is this what degreed meteorologists look at? I don't know. I'd have to ask them. It's probably one of the layers, but this is what Mark looks at. I like to see the health of these systems, and the more rounded in appearance they are, the stronger they are. It just makes sense. The conservation of angular momentum and the spherical shape of weather systems on our planet and probably other planets as well. Look at Jupiter. Uh, the, the stronger a system is, the tighter the vortex is. So that's what we're looking at here, vorticity or spin in the atmosphere, and that relates to energy as well. This is the initial frame, and um, so here's the Baja Peninsula. I'll outline it for you. Southern California, Washington, Oregon, up that way, and the Mexican coastline. I'll even come around here just to outline it all the way, Bay of Campeche, Central America, and we can leave this on, the beauty of telestration. And watch what happens with our system. There's a letter right there, and it moves along, getting nice and round in its appearance, packing in extra, um, oh, I don't even remember what you call those. They're kind of like height lines, I guess, in the atmosphere, but the vorticity signature is very strong, and it's like the force is strong with this one. It definitely is with Aletta. And then you see this next system, which would eventually go on to probably be Bud. That's the next name on the East Pack list of names. Spins up a few days later. So maybe some high surf along parts of the Mexican coast, including the Baja. And that's about the only hazard. But it is a hazard, so please pay attention to that if you're vacationing. You know people out there or you live there, just pay attention to these systems. They're kind of close to land. You know, they're not way out in the open Pacific. Uh, and we have to watch Bud and see what happens. If there's any kind of a trough that tries to dig in or the ridge slides more to the east, Bud may try to get closer to Mexico. So we might have a lot to talk about here in the coming days. Let's get rid of that frame and move over to the Western Atlantic, also the GFS from the 12Z run. That means it was initialized at around 8 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Z for Zulu time, or it's also UTC, and that's what they refer to it as. But us weather geeks just like to be lazy, and we call it the 12Z model. And so here it is, same kind of deal, 5,000 foot level, and you have this outline of the ridge in the mid-levels to lower levels of the atmosphere, and a little bit left over of this trough up here. And you can see the evidence of that frontal system draped right through there. All right, so we put this into motion. Watch what happens over the next seven days for this one. There's the front, and maybe some areas of enhanced vorticity, one up in the Big Bend and another one off the Carolinas, uh, low country of South Carolina, possibly. More rain is what it looks like to me. But then, as we get out here to days four, five, six, and beyond, and that's not way, and by the way, there's Bud trying to form over here. Four, five, six days out in the GFS, I know it gets a lot of uh, smackdown from people saying what an awful global model it is with its physics, but it did pretty good sniffing out the overall pattern for Alberto. And yes, I realize, you know, 10 days out and beyond, forget it. It's not useful probably at all, even for pattern recognition, I would say, and certainly not individual weather systems. That being said, let's notice what happens here at day seven, and we back it up just a little bit here. All right, so starting at around, uh, let's call it day five or so, you see this energy comes off of South America, and sometimes the GFS is too aggressive with that. Pretty strong trade surge in here, and it kind of closes this energy off as we advance through the frames. You'll see what happens there, and that's day five, six, you know, and look at that. It kind of yeah, I mean, there you go, the makings of another system, and that's only a little over six days out. So it's not way out in model fantasy land necessarily. Do I think this is exactly what's going to happen? Of course I don't, but it has my attention, and it tells us we need to watch that maybe this is the beginning symptom, kind of like when you just start to feel a little bad, you get a cold, a little runny nose, and you're just not 100%. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to come down with pneumonia. There's no reason to go to that extreme, but you might have to say, hey, maybe I should get some rest or increase the vitamin C or whatever. That's my analogy for the day. This just tells me that by day seven, the GFS is fairly aggressive at developing a system coming up out of the Caribbean, which is where Alberto came from. But 
This time, water temperatures in this part of the Gulf are warmer, and we are in the climatological favored time. May generally isn't, you know, only by a couple of days, right? But now we are. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, what are some other factors? Well, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is this period of upward motion enhancement, basically, is not really, over the next few days, favoring anybody. It's over here right now. This is the Euro and its ensemble members, the ECMWF. All these yellow lines and then the gray represents sort of the surrounding envelope of the ensemble members, and this is your mean. But the bottom line, the takeaway from this, this is where we are now, MGO active in phases five and six. So really, it's not favorable for anything in the Western Hemisphere, but that doesn't mean that it's unfavorable. This does not show unfavorable. It's showing where the Madden-Julian Oscillation is based on analyses and so forth. And even though it's in the phases that would be the maritime continent region towards the Western Pacific, it's not very amplified, and it's getting ready to dive into what we call the null phase. So that tells me there's not going to be one area dominated by intense tropical cyclone activity. No super typhoons out on the Western Pacific. Yeah, a couple of strong hurricanes in the East Pack, but maybe a convectively coupled Kelvin wave. It's, I know, what in the world is that? Um, maybe there are other things happening here on a smaller scale. These pieces of energy that come through outside of the Madden-Julian Oscillation. So since this is not overwhelming the signal, we have to look back at what we saw in the East Pack with Aletta and then eventually Bud, and maybe whatever is causing this to happen eventually bleeds over here, not that far, and sets the stage for something there. You see, you kind of have to think about it like a detective a little bit. Uh, don't overthink it, drive yourself crazy, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that this could be what we look at in a few days. It's also possible that there's nothing there at all, just increased convection or something like that. So it has my attention. It should have yours, and, you know, that's what we're here for, to just make sure people are aware, to talk about things calmly. Uh, and if something really scary comes along, like Irma last year or Maria, you bet, I'm going to tell you, and you should already know anyway, right? And if you know before I do, that's even better. That means you're paying attention. All right, so that's it for today. A lot to watch in the Eastern Pacific, and then maybe something in the Atlantic. We'll just have to see how it all develops. Real quick, if you are somewhere in southeast North Carolina and you can get down to Cape Fear Community College's auditorium tonight, uh, I'm going to be on a panel of hurricane specialists or experts, emergency managers. It's a, it's a forum. It's like a town hall meeting, a hurricane forum, um, co-sponsored or sponsored by, certainly part of it, the Wellington Star News, or it's just the Star News now, I guess. And um, I appreciate Cy Cantwell inviting me to participate. And that starts at 7 p.m. this evening at Cape Fear Community College. If you're in the area, drop on by, ask some questions, say hello as we discuss hurricanes. Very important. Wilmington especially has grown a lot, the Cape Fear region. Oh, boy. And it's been many years since we have had a direct hit from a major hurricane. It's getting on up there. And we have a lot of people with a big fat zero and the hurricane, hurricane Experience Department. So we'll be talking about that. I'll see if I can stream it live. I'm not, no promises. It might be inside of a dense steel reinforced building and I can't get a signal out. We'll see. If I can, I will. And that'll be on YouTube. So just we'll see. Small chance. All right. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. I appreciate you tuning in as always. Don't forget, I am supported by you all on Patreon. It's growing. Let's keep it growing from a dollar to whatever you want, and there's some awesome levels in there and incentives if you do, and that helps to keep this all going. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.